So, um, what what is the determining factor to send direct to the product detail page or not? I think I think it's tough to fully say it's like an if then statement. Um, we'll we'll often you know model out in our hypotheses most things we test and experiment. And you know, I think if we can see a model where our conversion rate is is high enough estimated from that PDP um, to to net out for the investment and for the experiment and for the test, uh, then then we probably would opt for the product detail page. Um, we'll run a lot of okay historical data. What do they have internally? Um, I think where. Um, there's perhaps less trust going through the system, less trust with the influencer. Um, then we might need to have kind of more of a building of that trust through the landing page. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen cases where an influencer can have so much trust and kind of their post almost becomes a, a, a landing page in itself in terms of explaining uh, away those concerns and pumping up the uh, psych factor, as Reforge will talk about, um, that that you don't necessarily need to have that intermediate or that kind of um, warm up page or that review page or that you know explanation of the product in more detail. Um, so it's it, it comes a bit of a math and science problem in terms of um, an estimate, but we can also make adjustments, right? We have to sometimes, and so if we are seeing that. Um, it's not converting the, the the beauty of affiliate and influencer by an extension is you get to kind of negotiate with the partner as the campaign's going to say, hey, we've had an X amount of time. We're at you know Sadat Sig. We're not seeing conversion as healthy as we thought. Let's try something new. So, mm -hmm. do we need to add confidence builders? Do we need to add trust symbols? Do we need to? maybe come up with a co-branded page. That's that's something that's really powerful for influencers of a sizable, you know, trust level to say, hey, trust symbol and XYZ brand have partnered together. And that's going to give you even more confidence to say this is this is something worth pursuing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean I'm what you mentioned is so key. So there's there's quite a few, you know, you're very soft-spoken. You deliver a lot of very valuable pieces of information. But uh, yeah, I, I want to really emphasize these things because there's quite a few things I picked up from everything you said. So first of all, do not go hiring 10 different influencers all at the same time. Test one at a time, right? So that's key because you want to know what they're going to bring to the table. The second thing that I heard is you have to test. You have to test. In order to test, you have to have historical data about your page performance, your product detail page performance, before the influencer comes on board and after the influencer comes on board so that you can see how that's impacting your conversion rates. Uh, so between those two, bringing one at a time and testing before you go all out is important for two reasons. First, you get a sense of what's going on. Second, when you are ready to scale, bring another influencer and another influencer. And so it's going to multiply, right? So you now have a playbook, so to speak, of what to do and what to look for. And then you start to set your benchmarks around these influencers of how you want them to perform. And then also uh, these playbooks are important, not about knowing what to do in a new situation. They are also important in uh, situations where things don't work. So it's almost like creating a uh, one of those flow charts. Uh, like if this happens, do this. If this happens, do that. So that's what the real playbook is about. So. Uh, what you mentioned about, you know, if it doesn't perform the way you expect, then maybe co-branded page, maybe this, maybe that. So there's so much you delivered. I, I just wanted to, 
I had to like, you know, bring it back up because it's so uh, valuable. 